Isaac from Campbellton, New Brunswick. With this month marking 20 years since ECW officially closed its doors, what do you think is the promotion's lasting legacy on the pro wrestling industry? ECW's legacy is huge. It is still felt to this day whenever you see an Extreme Rules match on WWE pay-per-view or a hardcore style match on AEW television, which I feel like is every week. I mean, yeah, you had FMW in Japan, and there's there's some influence from there, but the influence of ECW cannot be denied. It's felt every single week. You know, the Attitude Era. I would argue there would have been no Attitude Era were it not for the influence of ECW. None! There would not have been an Attitude Era were it not for ECW. But it was that appeal to that very niche audience that really doomed them because it prevented them. It stopped them from growing in the way that Paul Heyman probably wanted them to grow. You know, the things they were doing. It's a lot of crazy shit that happened in ECW. A lot of stuff that they got away with because in a lot of ways they were under the radar. They were very underground and they could get away with that shit. And I don't just mean using real music that they were absolutely not allowed to use. But how important was that? How important was the element of music in the original ECW? If you go back and watch the old ECW shows on the network, or uh, Peacock, when and if they ever get uploaded, you know, you don't get the music, and it really does kind of kill the vibe of a lot of the shows. But they were doing a lot of stuff, you know, with the matches and everything and the hardcore stuff, despite whatever great wrestling there may have been, that... It stopped them from growing in in a major way. Look, they did manage to eventually get on TNN, but it was never going to allow them to get to a mainstream level. And it would not have worked anyway, because if ECW went mainstream, I don't think their core loyal base of fans would have wanted that. It would have gone, it would have betrayed everything about what ECW was built on. The whole counterculture narrative, their, their renegade image. But the trade-off in not doing that is that it really put a cap on how much they could grow. One of the positives of ECW is that Paul Heyman gave a platform to a whole bunch of different people who may not have otherwise been given a platform. You know, the luchadors like Rey Mysterio and Juventud Guerrero, Japanese stars. Great wrestlers like Dean Malenko and Eddie Guerrero and Chris Jericho. These are all people who eventually made their way over to WCW and Eric Bischoff, and I give Bischoff credit for the, the cruiserweight division, and that was a huge element, I think, that made Nitro so successful back then, was the mix of the high-flying younger guys, the international stars, coupled with all the main eventers in the NWO and Sting and Luger and all those guys. But that probably doesn't happen were it not for what Heyman was doing at the time with ECW. You know, they they... Gave a platform to Steve Austin when he was hurt. And he couldn't even work. To come out of his shell personality-wise. He was all pissed off at the world after being fired by WCW and Eric Bischoff. And they just talked about this in the Steve Austin A&E documentary. Which I watched the other day and I enjoyed it. There was no new ground covered. I did watch it. I did enjoy it. And they covered that part of it. They covered his firing from EC from uh, WCW and Paul Heyman picking up the phone and saying, Hey kid. Why don't you come on down? The number of men who made a name for themselves in ECW, even if they were just passing through, who got snatched up by Vince McMahon or Eric Bischoff and went on to become some of the biggest names in the business, it's a pretty decent sized list. So I think the impact and the legacy of ECW is gigantic. And it's felt through all of those big names as well who at least had this brief career for themselves, a very memorable run in ECW, and eventually led to them being who they are today. Maybe that doesn't happen if Paul Heyman doesn't give them a platform when he did. Dick from Spring Hill, Florida. Before you poo-poo all over this, please hear me out. WrestleMania 15's main event in Philadelphia was Stone Cold Steve Austin against The Rock for the WWF title. Based on the fact that the Austin vs. McMahon feud was the hottest angle in wrestling history, especially in 99, 
Can an argument be made that says Austin versus McMahon should have been the main event instead of doing it at the pay-per-view the month before? I believe this for three main reasons, other than it being the hottest angle in wrestling. But number one, Vince McMahon had never been in a match before, so you have the first time ever effect. Number two, Austin and Rock was a match the fans had already seen a number of times in 97. And number three, it would have done a bigger buy rate because with Austin facing McMahon in the main event, it would leave The Rock to face Mankind instead of whatever match Mick had with Big Show. Do you agree? I don't. And actually, I think that number three point is completely invalid. I don't see how a bigger buy rate... (laughs) The Rock being in an undercard match against Mankind... You just got done telling me that Austin and Rock had a whole bunch of matches in 97. By the time Rock and Mankind would have gotten to the the WrestleMania in uh, 99, how many matches do you think they had? From the end of 90... uh, Let's see, the end of 98, right? They had that uh, Rock Bottom pay-per-view, I think it was. All the matches they had in January and February, it was completely played out by that point. So it's the same problem that you just got done telling me that uh, Austin and Rock would have had. So I don't, I don't agree with point number three. You know, point number two, or point number two, I guess, also. But uh, point number one, Vince had never been in a match. Yeah, I mean, you have the first ever effect. Uh, kind of, not really, because he was in the Royal Rumble match. So it's not like people have never seen him in a, in a match before. Maybe not a singles match, but he was technically already in the ring. Uh, I, I disagree. Look, the very thing that WWE spent countless hours and countless weeks and months criticizing WCW for, Jim Ross did it all the time on the air, mocking the fact that WCW had older guys in their main events, guys in their 40s, guys pushing 50. So now, as hot as the angle is, you're going to headline WrestleMania with a guy who... uh, How old was Vince McMahon at that point, right? Early 50s, mid 50s? It would make them look very hypocritical, I think, doing that as your WrestleMania main event. The match itself just would not have been any good. You have to have a WrestleMania main event that's at least good. It doesn't have to be the best technical match in the world. It's got a good story, then, then that's one part of it. Uh, but I, I disagree. WrestleMania was going to do a nice buy right no matter what. If anything, you could take Austin McMahon, which you know is not going to be a great match in the ring, put him in a cage, and do it on a B-show pay-per-view to boost a buy rate for a show. Let's say the, the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. I don't have it in front of me what that show did. I want to say it did maybe uh, 450,000 buys or something, 500 maybe. Let's say if it did 450, that's a show that normally would do 300 or 350. Well, now you did 450. Guess what? You just boosted a buy rate for a show that you know is going to do less. WrestleMania, you have to assume, is going to do pretty well, which it did. So I don't think it needed it. And I like the idea that they took two of their hottest young stars. I mean, Austin might have been mid-30s at that point, but as far as rock goes at least one of their hot young stars in the main event. And Rock was over. It was a big match. Uh, So no, I disagree. Uh, You could have done it, but I think it was better doing it the way that they did. You popped a buy rate for a show that needed it, not a show that didn't. And you got two big matches out of it back-to-back months instead of one. So I think they did uh, just the right thing. 